Welcome to Hope is Here, bringing hope to those struggling with life's difficult situations. Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and I want to talk to you about sin today. Uh, you know, we usually don't talk a lot about that on here. Uh, we try to be hopeful and keep you uh, from being hopeless, but uh, as I was thinking about it recently, I read this powerful devotion by Paul David Tripp and New Morning Mercies. Uh, I've shared a devotion from his a couple months ago, and um, just just a really great devotional book that really kind of challenges me in my faith. He had one back on May 28th that uh, kind of talked about sin and uh, are you denying your sin? And that was kind of my takeaway from it. And so I want to talk about that, share some things that he had in that devotion uh, that really spoke to me. And I think it'll really uh, maybe speak to you, challenge you. Um, sometimes the reason we're hopeless is because we, uh, we're we in sin and we don't like to admit that or talk about it. And, uh, you know, it's not necessarily, uh, quote, the big ones, the Ten Commandments that we, uh, you know, that know that, you know, obviously are things that break the heart of God and separate us from God. But it also can be things such as, you know, we're gossiping, uh, maybe we're dealing with anger and we we know we need to get some help, talk to somebody, a counselor, your pastor, a friend, uh, unforgiveness. Uh, we don't go to people. Uh, the Bible talks about, you know, go to your brother if you have something against them, your, your sister, uh, gluttony, lust. Uh, I mean, you know, there's just things, uh, it could be an alcohol issue, gambling. Um, you know, there's just things that, you know, doesn't mean initially that they're something that are separated from God, but that's how the enemy always does it. He's so deceptive. You just kind of do this one thing one time, and next thing you know, and uh, kind of share with you, mine's been food. Uh, just have used that to kind of embrace when I'm tired or stressed or lonely or um, just, you know, the excuses go on and on. And so all that being sin said, uh, sin separates us from God. And uh, if you listen to this program, we've been doing over five years, done over a thousand programs, and I'm just so blessed and so thankful for the many, many uh, people that are financial partners and just bless this ministry and so appreciate the people. Uh, we have a handful that do it on a monthly basis, and then we just have uh, so many wonderful people just throughout the year. God just leads them to give a financial blessing to this ministry, and I just want to say thank you to you uh, that make this possible. But I think if you've listened uh, over the five years or many uh, of the over a thousand programs and the many wonderful guests that we have had that uh, I'm not a fire and brimstone guy and Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says for now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But I do believe God convicts us. And uh, we're going to be looking in 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10, and maybe there's an area that uh, God wants to speak to you that's separating you from Him. And while you're getting that looked up on your Bible and uh, or your app, uh, I'm going to share the very basis at the top of this devotion by Paul David Tripp. He says, today you'll work to deny your sin or you'll receive the Spirit's conviction as grace and run to Jesus Christ for rescue and and forgiveness. And that's why I'm entitling this uh, program, Are You Denying Your Sin? Just from that takeaway there, it really spoke to me. And he's basing it off 1 John, John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. So let's read this. It says, This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light and in God there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I want to say that again. But if we walk in the light, as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So I'm so thankful the church that I'm at that we take communion each Sunday. And I know a lot of churches don't do that, and, you know, that's okay. But it just always reminds me, I take that cup of juice, which represents the blood that Jesus sacrificed for us, the blood of the Lamb. 
goes on to say here in uh, verse 8 in 1 John chapter 1, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and God's word is not in us. Mm. Such a powerful passage, just five verses there. You maybe want to meditate on that later this week. First John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. But I want to share five takeaways from this passage uh, in First John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10 that Paul David Tripp talked about in this wonderful devotion on May 28th. He said, number one, sin is a big deal. You know, we kind of sometimes kind of like to, yeah, it's not that bad. The enemy's so good at that. But he he says, grace has brought us into personal communion with a God who is holy in every way. He dwells in eternal light. The darkness of our sin is what separates us from God. The whole movement of history from the time of the fall announces to us that God takes sin so seriously that he wrote the story of, of history so that his son would come and through his life and death deal with sin and bridge the gap between God and the creatures made in his image. You cannot be serious about your relationship with God and not take sin seriously. Say that one more time. You cannot be serious about your relationship with God and not take sin seriously. That's one of the reasons I'm doing this program today is that maybe that's why um, you've kind of wandered off and uh, God's like saying, no, come back to me. Confess your sin as it talks about there in 1 John chapter 1 verses 5 through 10 about confessing your sin and God will forgive you because of the blood of Jesus. A second takeaway from this passage in 1 John chapter 1 verses 5 through 10, because sin is a big deal, the cleansing blood of Jesus is our only hope. Because sin is a big deal, the cleansing blood of Jesus is our only hope. Jesus came and lived and died because there was no other way to deal with sin. It is so powerful, destructive, and comprehensive in its effects in us that there's no way we could have ever escaped or defeated sin on our own. Sin required the radical rescue of the shed blood grace of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Friends, I pray that, you know, Easter's been now uh, over uh, two months, uh, right at two months. And, uh, you know, we just, we can't forget what it cost Jesus and the blood that he shed. And all through the Old Testament, they sacrificed the lamb and animal and the blood of that animal uh, for forgiveness of our sins. But Jesus, the lamb of God, does that for us. And that's why Jesus is our only hope. And I'm so thankful that God loved us so much and that Jesus loved us so much that even though when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and said, you know, if it be thy will, remove this cup. I mean, man, so often I've asked God, hey, I really don't want to go through this, but I'm thankful that Jesus was selfless enough that he said, but thy will be done. Number three, denying remaining sin is the height of, of self-deception. Denying remaining sin is the height of self-deception. You and I lay down so much daily empirical evidence of our struggle with sin that it takes a deep commitment to denial for us to convince ourselves that we are, in fact, okay. Every time we excuse, minimize, rationalize, or point the finger of blame, we are participating in that system of denial. And friends, I've been guilty of that, you know, making excuses, blaming somebody else for a situation or sin in my life. And yet, uh, friends, uh, man, there's so much freedom when you just own your part, whatever part that is. There's a lot of freedom in that. A fourth takeaway from 1 John chapter 5, verse 10 is that God is always faithful to the promises of the cross of Jesus. God is always faithful to the promises of the cross of Jesus. Your Savior loves to forgive. 
He really is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You know, friends, that is just so, so true. And maybe you just need to hear that today. You know, some of you think God's mad at you. No, no, no. Friends, God is mad about you. (laughs) Uh, I heard that many years ago from a pastor, and I've never forgotten that. God's not mad at you. God's mad about you. That's why God created Adam and Eve. He he wanted to have a relationship with us. And even after they sinned, you know, early on, your first book of the Bible, I think it's chapter three, and they sinned, they ate the fruit from the one tree, could have everything else, but yet they bought into the lies of Satan and uh, gave in to temptation and ate the fruit from the only tree they weren't supposed to. And then they had knowledge and knew that they were in sin, and they went and hid from God. Yet I'm so thankful that in chapter 3 in Genesis, it tells us that God went looking for them. He took a walk and was looking for them and asked and said, Hey, Adam, where are you? So God has been pursuing a love relationship, a personal relationship, which God is love. The Bible tells us that since the beginning of time, friends. And so I want to encourage you not to be like Adam and Eve and to run from God, but I want to encourage you today to run to God. That's really the point of this whole program today is God saying, hey, come to me. His arms are wide open. When I think about you know, how much God loves us, I don't have to look any further than the cross and the outstretched arms of Jesus nailed to a cross going through a brutal and horrific death. That's how much God loves you, friends. Just look at the cross. We see a lot of cross symbols, you know, uh, on churches, on necklaces. uh, And just uh, when you see that, just think about the outstretched arms of Jesus Christ and how much he loves you and that your Savior loves to forgive. In fact, you know, Jesus forgave those people that were spitting on him and talking trash to him and gambling for what little clothes that he had left there and just said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And if in that agonizing pain he can forgive them, friends, he can, can forgive you and me. The fifth and final takeaway I want to share here from 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, 10, and this powerful devotion by Paul David Tripp on May 28th in his wonderful devotional book, New Morning Mercies. He says, denying sin makes a liar out of God and denies the message of his word. Say that one more time. Denying sin makes a liar out of God and denies the message of his word. I mean, here's the bottom line. Either God is in his word It's true, and when he says that you have a problem you can't solve or you're right, that you're not so bad after all, it can't be both ways. I mean, either we believe what God says and admit, you know, that there could be an issue with sin, or, you know, we just say, no, I'm not that bad. And, um, you know, friends, it's kind of either or, and that's kind of where we're at a lot of times in this world. We kind of in that gray area, and I want to encourage you to say, no, I want to admit whatever I have in my life that's separating from God, come to him, confess it, have forgiveness, and you can do it by yourself, but I found quite often it's so much more powerful when I do it with a friend, a brother in Christ, and uh, we pray together and kind of renew and refresh and restart that relationship with Jesus. So I'll close with this today. So why deny today what grace has so completely forgiven and covered? So today, you'll work to deny your sin or you'll receive the Spirit's conviction as grace and run to Jesus Christ for rescue and forgiveness. I'm Greg Horn, and this is Hope Is Here. Thank you for listening to Hope Is Here podcast. To listen to one of our previous programs or to make a tax-deductible donation, please go to our website, hopeishere.today. That's hopeishere.today. If you have been blessed by Hope Is Here, would you consider making a donation to help this ministry continue to reach thousands in Central Kentucky every day? It's simple and safe. Go to our website at hopeishere.today where you can make a safe and secure online donation or you can find our address to mail a check. All donations are tax deductible and they are greatly appreciated. Please make your donation today at hopeishere.today. Again, that's hopeishere.today. Dot today.